Imagine what would happen if we had a second sun. That is, there would be two luminaries in the sky. There is a high chance that the Earth's orbit would be very unstable. If one of the suns were larger and brighter and had a much stronger gravitational effect on us, then that sun could pull the planet towards itself. On the other hand, if the gravitational pull of none of the stars was strong enough, the Earth would fly away into space, becoming one of those rogue planets traveling the universe alone without a star system. Since the combined gravity of the two stars would be stronger, it would take the Earth 280 days instead of 365 to complete a full orbit. A year on Earth would be shorter, but not by much. The distance between the stars must be less than 15 million kilometers. Then, the orbits of all the planets in our solar system would be stable, including Mercury. But let's play it safe and imagine that the stars are about 5 million kilometers apart. In this case, the two stars would revolve around each other every 10 days. Every five days, one star would pass in front of another. From Earth, it would look like a solar eclipse, but instead of our moon blocking the sun, it would be one star blocking the other. And instead of 7.5 minutes, this eclipse would last about six hours. Under these conditions, everything would be in a perfect alignment for the Earth to orbit the two suns. The only question is whether our planet would have formed in the first place in a binary star system. In this video, you will learn about a type of stars called binary and their main features. After all, binary stars are considered fairly common objects in the observable universe. Nonetheless, they are of genuine interest to astronomers around the world. So, what makes them so interesting? binary stars. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Binary stars are systems of two stars orbiting each other. They form a double star system. This phenomenon is much more common than you might think looking up at the starry sky. Scientists claim that every second star is in a binary or multiple star system. This makes up about 50% of all the stars visible with the naked eye. What makes binary stars special is that they are attracted to each other and move around a common gravity center due to their huge mass and gravity. They dance around each other, if you will. The more massive or brighter star is called the main star, and the less massive or bright one is called the companion. The main star is labeled A, and the companion is identified as B. Their common gravity center that lies somewhere between them and depends on the star's mass and their distance from each other is the invisible glue holding them together. The orbiting period of such stars varies greatly, from several hours to hundreds of years. If we lived in such a binary star system, life would no longer be the same. The phases of day and night could alternate depending on which of the two suns was shining on Earth at that time. Most likely, life on our planet would have evolved in a completely different way. Just imagine another sun rising after the sunset, but this time it would be brighter or darker or shining with different colors. What would this mean to you? Would you like to see this phenomenon? Write it down in the comments below. Astronomers have long discovered that binary stars vary in their origin type physical parameters, and other characteristics. That's why scientists proposed to classify these objects of the celestial sphere. Traditionally, binary stars are divided into two types, the stars with no mass exchange and those where such exchange happens at one point or another. The latter, in turn, are divided into contact and semi-detached stars. How do binary stars exchange matter? You probably know that getting from one celestial body to another is not that easy. In order to understand this, let's consider the concept of equipotential surfaces. In simple terms, they are places with equal force of gravity. In single bodies, equipotential surfaces are concentric spheres, which explains their spherical shape. In a pair of bodies, 
in our case, binary stars, they get a rather complex shape. This shape resembles an hourglass and is otherwise called the Rocher cavity, named after the French astronomer Edouard Rocher. If we consider two stars lying close to each other and mentally connect them with a line, then we can roughly imagine or calculate where the system's mass center would be. Once there, the body can remain there indefinitely. The star's gravitational forces will balance each other out. It turns out that each star is surrounded by its own gravitational sphere of influence, the Rocher lobe, and its mass center is a critical point called the internal Lagrange point, or L1. This is the most interesting part. The stellar matter that has entered L1 can pass into the Rocher lobe of the second element without spending any energy. Consequently, there can be three types of such star systems. For example, detached binary systems are stars that revolve around a common mass center, but a long distance between them makes any mass exchange impossible. The stars don't reach their Rocher lobes, and accordingly, the L1 point. Semi-detached binary systems are pairs where one of the stars is either much bigger than the other or is gaining mass much faster and has already filled its Rocher lobe. In this case, the second star will give its matter to the first one. But in some cases, binary stars are so close to each other that their surfaces can touch. If such contact occurs, then a possible scenario depends on the ratio of the star's initial masses. If one is bigger than the other, it will start pulling the matter of the other star onto itself. The more massive star will evolve faster, gradually becoming larger and turning into a red giant. Then its companion will begin to pull its matter back. It will then in turn become a red giant, and the stars will switch roles once again. In the end, all the switching will end in a supernova explosion, destroying one of the elements, a black hole, a pulsar, or some other exotic object emerging in its place. But if both stars have approximately the same initial mass, then the system will evolve in a somewhat different scenario. As an example, let's consider a close binary system, VFTS-352. VFTS-352 was discovered by ESO, European Southern Observatory. It lies 160,000 light-years away from us in the Tarantula Nebula. To date, VFTS-352 is the most massive and hottest object of this kind known to astronomers. In total, the stars weigh 57 solar masses. Their surface temperature reaches 40,000 degrees and their centers are 12 million kilometers apart. Since the stars of VFTS-352 have approximately the same mass, instead of absorbing one another, they form a kind of bridge where they can exchange matter. Up to 30% of their matter is believed to be in a kind of common use. However, this period of shared living won't last long by astronomical standards. In the future, VFTS-352 can have several possible scenarios. First, both stars can merge into one. If the new star formed during this merger rotates very quickly, it can die in the so-called long gamma-ray burst, the most powerful event in the universe known to us. Another possible scenario is not a star merger, but a supernova explosion accompanied by the formation of a pair of stellar mass black holes. But no matter how the story of VFTS-352 ends, it looks like it won't do it without space fireworks. The next star system, Sirius, is one of the brightest stars in the universe. Just like people, stars can be great and small, famous and obscure, those who are well known and those nothing can be said about at all. The number of the latter in heaven is far greater than the number of people on earth. Sirius is one of the stars with a famous name. Being the brightest star, it can rightfully be called the most interesting one among the fixed stars that shine in the night sky 
and catch our eye. Sirius is twice as heavy as the Sun and is about 8.6 light years from Earth and is thus one of the closest star systems. Its colorful shimmer is due to the air turbulence in our atmosphere. It's especially noticeable when observing Sirius, as it's very bright and lies quite low in the sky. Sirius is steadily moving towards the solar system and will reach the closest point in 64,000 years at a distance of 7.68 light years. Then Sirius will drift away again. Sirius is not one celestial body, but two. They are traditionally called Sirius A and B. They revolve around the mass center. According to established data, it takes about 50 years to complete one cycle. According to scientists, the system is about 250 million years old. Sirius A is a main sequence star of A1 spectral type. Its mass is about 2.1 times the mass of the Sun, and its diameter is 1.7 times bigger. Sirius is 25 times more luminous than the Sun. The surface temperature is slightly lower than 10,000 Kelvin. Some distinct metallic lines are observed in Sirius A's light spectrum. This indicates it's enriched with elements heavier than helium. For example, iron, which is especially easy to observe spectroscopically. The ratio of iron to hydrogen in its atmosphere is about three times higher than in the Sun's atmosphere. Scientists predict that Sirius A will use up its hydrogen supply over the next billion years, then turn into a red giant and eventually become a white dwarf, weighing about 0.6 solar masses. Sirius B is a faint satellite of Sirius A and is the closest white dwarf to the solar system. It is the size of the Earth. Being the closest to us, it is one of the most studied white dwarfs in the world. It played an important role in the discovery of white dwarfs. The fact that it's overshadowed by the highly luminous Sirius A makes it more difficult to observe. Sirius B has 98% of the Sun's mass, but only 2.7% of its luminosity. Studying double stars is a rewarding experience that gives us a chance to appreciate how much our astronomical equipment can do, the sky visibility, and above all, our observing skills. If we are patient enough to observe such stars for many years, we'll see that the sky is very dynamic and full of life. But binary systems are not just beautiful. For many decades, they have been studied by both professional and amateur observers. They have played an important role in our understanding of gravity and the galaxy structure. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video.